are struggling with despair or consumed with rage or feeling completely despondent? Who are we when we're crying in the bathroom in grubby pajamas and unwashed hair, noses running like when we were two? Who are we when we are bored, bored, bored? When we find ourselves being less than friendly, less than helpful, less than positive, less than kind, less than generous? Who are we when we're just too scared to go into that art store or to yoga or to the page? Does that mean we're not artists? We're not on our path? Does it mean we've messed it up? Are we stuck here? Is it going to be like this forever? Is this a sign that our dreams are not for us? And will all those people who are actually living the creative life, will they reject us? Will they see that clearly we are not one of them because we are stuck and sad and angry and frustrated and full of all this yuck? So this is another one of those good news, bad news situations. The good news is that wherever you are on that emotional spectrum, we human beings have that range for a reason. We're designed that way. It's like our full palette of color. It all belongs to us. And your creative life belongs to you wherever you are and whatever you are feeling, period. Now, the other news now that I think about it, I'm not going to call it the bad news, because it really isn't bad. It's just news. All of this, this yuck, this anger, this, all that stuff, it is your creative life. This is what it looks like. That full range, that full spectrum of emotions. There will be down days. I can tell you I've had lots of them. And there will be triumphant days, too. There will be times you are too scared, and there will be times you find your courage. Creative life is so deeply steeped in authenticity, and authenticity is about being all that you are. It's about everything you bring to the table, including your pain. Look out there into the world of art. Think of the songs that move you, the movies that touch your heart, the stories that have stuck with you forever, the photos, the paintings, the sculptures, the moments. Chances are that within them there is a whole range of tone, not just happiness or joy or bliss. There is room for all of this in your creative life. There is room for all of you. Don't think you only get to be part of you. Bring all of you to the table. Bring all of you to the group. Bring all of you to the conversation. If you ever do any work with me, if you ever participate in anything to do with Jamie Riddler Studios, I want you to know that you don't have to be cheerful or a cheerleader. You just have to be true to who and where you are. All creative life comes from there. And today, I'm really excited to share with you the creative life of my guest, writer, designer, and photographer, Gayla Trail of You Grow Girl. She's going to share the powerful journey she's been on. I'm sure she's going to inspire you. Enjoy this time with Gayla. Hey, Gayla. Welcome to Creative Living with Jamie. Hello. I am so excited to talk to you. Why don't we start off with you sharing a little bit about you and about what your creative life looks like. <laughs> I love that laugh that comes with that question. <laughs> I'm just really terrible at talking about myself in that way. <laughs> um, and also defining what I do. I find that incredibly difficult. <laughs> yeah, i got to tell you, I'm sure there's people nodding right now already relating to what you're saying. <laughs> and it, it changes. It changes depending on my mood. So let's see what my mood is today. I write about gardening. I take pictures of gardens and plants. I take pictures of things that are not gardens or plants. <laughs> um, uh, I make stuff. <laughs> so you follow your inspirations, and it takes you lots of different creative places. Essentially, yes. I mean, I didn't start out to be a garden writer. I never imagined that for myself. But here I am, and it, it fits me. Oh, that's not awesome. <laughs> How did you end up there? Like, what was the road that took you there? Hmm. Which road do 
I explain. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's pretty complicated, but you know, on a just on a career level, um, I went to school to university for fine art. Mm-hmm. Um, I, but I was interested in science. When I was a kid, I thought I was going to be a scientist, and I actually went through high school doing all the science credits that you need to go to university for science. Right. So it's very specific. You have to take very specific courses, very focused. But I always took art classes as my extra classes. Like any time I could fit any kind of art class in, I did. And then when I was in my last year of high school, so at the time in Ontario we had grade 13, I was really questioning whether I wanted to be in science anymore. I just really didn't, I wasn't feeling it for a whole number of reasons, and um, I was really hesitant to go into fine art because what do you do with fine art, (laughs) with a fine art degree? And I looked at a lot of other things really at the very last minute. I mean, I had already applied to go to school for science. (laughs) I had already, actually, by the time I really made a decision, I had already been accepted for science. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) So I was already going to school for science, but I was looking at the course and going, and seeing that there are all these other career options that I'd never even heard of before, that I'd never been exposed to before, you know, these other paths of study, and I was looking at those as options, but, you know, what do I do with a degree in African American studies? Like, (laughs) you know, these are the kinds of places that my mind was going. And then eventually I did end up switching to fine art and and did a fine art degree. So um, left school, started to do graphic design, Graphic design was what I wanted to do. I actually had toyed with the idea of doing toy design, <laughs> but really settled. I love print and paper and um, started doing that. And long story short, I uh, started my site, You Grow Girl. I had this obsession with plants. And one day, a friend of mine, we were on my roof, and a friend of mine was looking at all of my plants and said, you should have a TV show, because we always used to joke about having a cable access TV show, and we'd make up these weird, crazy fantasy cable access TV shows. (laughs) 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 Cable access is like one of those places where you can do really weird things. (laughs) And he said, you should have a TV show, and you should call it You Grow Girl. And I said, well, I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm going to register that Earl. (laughs) And I did, and then a year later, I started the site. And when I started the site, I didn't think of it as a gardening site. I didn't want to go there for a number of reasons. I I couldn't go there. Um, I just thought about it as a site about plants and my obsession with plants, and it all kind of evolved from there. Have you always loved or felt an affinity to the garden and the plants? I have always had an affinity for nature. Uh, Uh, I didn't grow up with very much nature around me. I grew up in a subdivision, a very low-income subdivision in the suburbs (laughs) in Ontario, Mm -hmm. near the border. And um, the closest nature to me was really the fallow brown field behind the Tower Street City Plaza. <laughs> right. Nobody had gardens in my neighborhood. Um, it was just lawn. I was. Re- I recently gave a presentation about garden writing, and I said in my presentation that gardens were like mythical unicorns to me. It, like it didn't wasn't something that I had direct exposure to. It wasn't something that I saw as a possibility for myself. Right. And then as an adult living in the city. I did have a garden for a short time in a, in a student's house that I lived in in the backyard, but then I moved into an apartment building and didn't have what I thought was the appropriate space for our name. And it really, I'm not sure, I guess it, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> <laughs> and I started doing it. <laughs> I just started doing it. And over time, I started finding other places to do it. <laughs> that were not typical places, were not the kind of places that I saw in magazines and in books, and um, I'm still doing that. That's awesome. I find, like, I know when I 